Hello everyone, my name is Techno, and today I will be walking you through in the day of the life of a cloud support engineer. Cloud support engineers can either work from Monday to Friday, Sunday to Thursday, or even Tuesday to Saturday. And for the times, it's either between 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock p.m., or it's from 9 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. And it really depends on the business's use case because the cloud support engineering role is a hybrid role. All right, so typically in the day, I'm going to start my mornings by checking my emails. It's really important that I check emails because I might be getting internal emails from my team and it might be super important related to a case or maybe to an event. Next, I also check these emails for customers who might have responded from the previous day because every day I'll be working on cases where I might work with a new customer and after I send my response, they either might respond today or they might respond tomorrow. So it's always a good idea to check when I receive these cases or when I receive these emails. So that way I'm able to understand how to research properly for their next question that they might have for me. Or maybe this might be a meeting link so that way I can join on that meeting link at a specified time. For these kinds of emails that I receive, I can sometimes be getting a live chat or a live phone call from the customer. Usually the customer tells us the problem. I, as the cloud support engineer, will ask questions to probe around the, the, the pain point. And once I understand their pain point, then that's when I go into my research phase and then find a solution for the customer. I'm gonna to demonstrate to you a mock example as far as what needs to be done when we receive an email from a customer. Typically at the start of the case, what you would do is receive an email from a customer, kind of like this, and in this particular example, they are unable to connect to their EC2 instance. The most important part about this is understanding exactly what kind of pain point the customer has. But once you understand the customer's pain points, the next step is to ask questions. Ask yourself questions that would help with the troubleshooting process. What is a server IP address? Are they trying to ping it? Are they trying to use SSH? What could the issue be? Or if they didn't go into detail, what is the instance ID? What is the traffic flow and has it worked before? So once I ask these kinds of questions, I would then do my own research, whether that's using my internal tool or use public documentation or internal documentation to kind of troubleshoot the process. In this example, we don't see a security group that would allow for ICMP traffic, which is part of the reason why this customer might not be able to ping it. All right, so this is the end of the case where you're finally sending that email to the customer and you want to share them what your findings were. So you're gonna go ahead and draft up an email. You're gonna tell the customer what you've done, what you've researched. So maybe if you needed to lab, you can tell them that you're labbing. Maybe during this lab, you found the, the problem, which was in this case, maybe a security group issue. So what the customer would need to do is allow for ICMP from quad zeros or a specific IP address range in order to allow ICMP traffic to their EC2 instance. And once the customer does that, then they should be able to see successful connectivity through ICMP and that's it, the case is now resolved. This is a typical workflow that a cloud support engineer would use from start to finish. Now, of course, this might vary from profile to profile, but still the foundations are the same in the sense that there's a start of the case, your research phase, and finally the conclusion where you send out an email to the customer. Sometimes being a cloud support engineer is not always about doing casework. Sometimes it's about diving into other kind of projects. For example, it could be interviewing with candidates or it could be writing a public documentation or even an internal documentation for other cloud support engineers. Or sometimes it could just be educating yourself, training yourself to understand a specific service and become a subject matter expert. I think one of the most interesting things about being a cloud support engineer is how I'm able to interview potential new hires. As an interviewer, I have a couple of tips for you that you might find handy when it comes to applying. So if this is a cloud support engineering role that you'd like to apply to, Here's a key takeaway from an interviewer. The first advice that I have for you is using the STAR format. This STAR format stands for situation, task, action, and result. So how it works is when you answer a behavioral or a technical question, you use the STAR format to explain a situation, a time where you performed something, where you did something. When you use a STAR format, it allows you to tell your story in a very easy way. Now you have a story from beginning all the way to the end. And not only that, you're able to highlight those specific tasks that you've performed in a very easy way. The second thing that I like to add in is to make sure that you include one of the leadership principles whenever you answer any of the questions, whether that's a technical question 
or even a behavioral question, but mainly towards the behavioral side, because with those 16 leadership principles, you should at least be able to associate one of them with one of your stories. Near the end of the day, this is where I start wrapping up all my cases if I have any cases remaining or if I have any cases left over. So maybe sometimes a customer might send an email back to me around one o'clock or two o'clock and I can just send them a quick follow-up response um, near the end of my shift so that way they have all the answers they need. Or sometimes a customer may want to schedule a meeting with you so you can go ahead and let them know what your availability is so that way you can coordinate a time with them for that next meeting. And once I'm done with all of those cases and it's the end of my shift, I simply go ahead and close my laptop and I call it a day and I'm free to do whatever I like right after my shift. And I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for more because in my next few episodes, I'll be releasing on how a cloud support engineer can aim for the next promotion. And that wraps up my day as a cloud support engineer. If you have any other kind of questions or comments, feel free to ask them down below and I'll be able to answer your kind of questions. And most of all, like and subscribe if this was helpful to you. And I'll see you in my next episode. Bye.